Six Nations 2023, folks. The Sunday game from Paris. France, number two in the world, taking on Scotland, number five in the world, which is, uh, apart from the Irish, this is featuring the two highest ranked teams in the Six Nations. So, yeah, man, Scotland two from two. Great start to the campaign. France dropped their first game in a long time, a fortnight ago against Ireland. So, we'll be looking to bounce back. But, yeah, we'll go through some lineups, some recent history, some stats, predictions. You guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one is going to go. Uh, I mentioned France. Yeah, they, they definitely will be looking to bounce back. Uh, it was kind of to be expected that they wouldn't make a handful of changes because uh, they need a they need to get a result, basically, don't they? Their um, Six Nations campaign has taken a bit of a hit with that away loss to Ireland and especially the fact they didn't pick up a bonus point. So they have kept things very, very stable. I mean, by Marchand and Hawass is the front row. Hawass is the only change to the starting 23, starting 15, and uh, that's because Uini Antonio uh, has been suspended for that shot on uh, on Rob Herring. So Hawass comes in, obviously a lot being made of the last time he played the Scots when he gave Jamie Ritchie a wee punch to the face, but uh, I'm sure that won't happen again this time. Uh, Flamont and Willemser continue on in the second row. Flamont is the, uh, the second top tackler in the entire Six Nations, so he's been getting through a whole bunch of work and then Gelon, uh, Olivon and Aldrit are the back row and Gelon has actually been the third top tackler of the uh, of the Six Nations as well so the two of those guys are uh, getting through a whole lot of work. Uh, Dupont and Intermark continue at 9 and 10. I would have loved to have seen Jalibert but to be honest I don't think it was ever going to happen given the fact that they again need need to bounce back after that loss. Uh, I don't think Galtier is the kind of coach to just swing the axe to make changes. He's got faith in these guys uh, to go and get a different kind of result. Moefaita and Fiku, 12 and 13. Fiku, I think, has been having a phenomenal season. Um, you know, defensive masterclass at times. You know, he's the one who helped set up that DuPont try-saving tackle in that last game against Ireland. And um, he's been useful with his uh, carries. Well, I think he's like the fourth guy for defenders beaten. But the main guys who have been breaking all the tackles for France, actually, is the two wingers, man. Uh, Pinot's busted 15, and Dumortier has busted 14. So these are second and third for defenders beaten. So I know a lot's been made of um, you know the Scottish attack, but uh, we can't afford to go sleeping on the French. And then uh, Ramos, there was a little bit of a call. Maybe he needs to be replaced by Jaminet. But again, uh, Galti has kept things very stable, so he continues on at 15 probably hasn't lived up to the billing that he, he made for himself in november last year but uh i don't think he's been bad despite the fact that there was a bit of a negative reaction to that last result uh the bench palo wardi falatea same same telfa fenua kos and makalu and then kuyu and jalibert as well i don't think i don't think dupont's been substituted in the first two games from memory yeah kuyu and um, ligarek have both kind of sat for 80. so it'll be interesting to see if they decide to to use um, Kuyu at all in this game, or if Dupont just plays through the whole thing, it may depend on the scoreline. We'll kind of have to wait and see. So very, very stable for the French is pretty much the order of the day. For the Scots, stability is very much the order of the day as well. They've decided not to go and make wholesale changes either. Uh, Schoeman, Turner, and Fagerson, that's the same front row as played last time. I uh, remember Fagerson didn't play in the opening round, but he was back for the second round and he uh, continues on in that tight head spot. Gilchrist and Gray are still in the second row and then Richie Watson and Ferguson is the back row. Uh, so Watson is your main change. He comes in for Crosby who is kind of unlucky and Gregor Townsend mentioned the fact that he was unlucky uh, to drop out but um, Watson's back fit and he's been playing uh, for his club so he kind of resumes that spot in the familiar number seven jersey alongside Richie and Fagus and so I haven't looked at the numbers but I would say that's probably Gregor's most selected back row in recent years right I mean there's been a bunch of guys who've come in and out but I think that's his main three guys although as I said um, Crosby is unlucky because he's been getting through a heap of work as well uh, Ben White Finn Russell 910 continues on uh, Finn Russell's been, I know he's getting a lot of uh, kudos for like all his, uh, you know, wicked offloads and cross kicks and whatnot, but uh, he's been taking the ball to the line a lot as well, which is often setting up the rest of his uh, teammates for chances. So that's really pleasing to see. And Ben White's been, um, been very, very sharp. He's keeping Ali Price 
Well, uh, he's not even been in the 23. He is in the 23 for this one, but he's still got a, a lock on that number nine jersey anyway, doesn't he? Uh, two Pilato Hugh Jones also getting a lot of plaudits for their attacking work, but also their defensive work has been very solid. And then big Duhan. I talked about the two French wingers. Duhan, 20 tackle busts is the top guy in the Six Nations. Ahead of Peno is 15 and Dumorti is 14. 20 for big Duhan. So yeah, look out for him. Kyle staying back to brace in the last one is Stuart Hogg. Resumes at 15. There was a little bit of talk after his knock in the last game that he might be replaced by Kinghorn, who was, you know, very solid in his um in his performance from the bench, but uh Kinghorn continues to ride the pine. Uh speaking of the bench, Fraser Brown, Jamie Batty, WP Nell, VP I should say. Uh that's your forward replacements, front row, Johnny Gray, Sam Skinner, and Jack Dempsey. So it's a six-two split. Uh, with just Ali Price and Blair Kinghorn covering the backs. Gregor Townsend basically said he knows that France like to play 6-2, so he wanted to see their 6-2 and raise them a 6-2 of his own. So we'll see if that uh, if that works out for them. Um, Stats-wise, it's an interesting one because France really, really struggled with the penalty count against the Italians. They, they, they conceded like 18 penalties. But they were much improved against the Irish where they only conceded 7 uh, but with Ireland, they, they struggled with territory, which is unusual for France. Like France has traditionally, under Galtier, been happy to play without possession, but they, they don't like playing in their own half. So, yeah, uh, it'll be interesting if that's kind of able to be turned around this week for the French. Scotland have scored some pretty amazing tries, you know, cross kicks and whatnot, especially. But um, Scotland also haven't had that much territory. But I guess the difference with them is they've been really lethal with their finishing. Like at times in that England game, they were kind of seemingly, you know, stuck in their own half for a bit. But then it wouldn't take them long before they get down your 22 and score a try. So that's maybe a kind of pleasing aspect for them as well. So, yeah, we'll see. Um, interestingly, if you look at the last five games, Scotland has the edge over France over the last five. It is three Scottish wins to the two French ones, although four of those last five games... Uh, have been played at Murrayfield. So they've met each other a fair bit in recent times. However, the game in France was won by Scotland. They are one of the few sides in recent years to go to France and get a win. That was back in 2021. But then in the reverse fixture last year at Murrayfield, it was 36-17 with the, the French kind of bouncing back after the disappointing result from a year before to get the win. So the most recent win goes to France, but the the recent results, if you can call from 2019 recent, um, does go in Scotland's favour. So make of that what you will. The average score is France 22, Scotland 21. So very, very tight between these sides. Even if, when you look at the predictions, the French are pretty comfortable favourites. Eight points with the bookies and seven points with the rugby forecast algorithm. So predicted to be kind of at least one try comfortably uh, in front by the time the final whistle is blown. Speaking of the whistle, Nika Amushukeli, the Georgian, is the referee for this one. It's on at 4 o'clock local time, which I think is 3 o'clock for you guys uh, in the UK and Ireland. That's 4 o'clock in the morning, I think, for those of us in NZ. So early wake up on a Monday morning. Uh, it's on ITV and RTE in the UK and Ireland, respectively. Those are free-to-air channels, so if you have not yet done so and you're outside of free-to-air territory, check out a VPN I use Express to jump on and uh, watch the games for free. It is a uh, it is a handy thing and they do kind of 30 day money back guarantees and whatnot. So if you ever wanted to try a VPN, the Six Nations is probably a good time to try one. And um, the World Cup's on the horizon. That's gonna be free to air on ITV as well. So happy days. You guys let us know your thoughts. Do you think Scotland can potentially go three from three? Or is an away trip to France just going to be too much? Can you see the French losing two in a row? Or are they just going to be too good and looking to bounce back? You guys let us know your thoughts. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Yeah.